Welcome to our workshop. Today we're going to build a thermoelectric generator. Let's get started. For the tutorial, you will need a few electrical merits, a copper heat sink, a power regulation device, such as a goal zero, a charging cable for your goal zero, some thermal paste, a small computer fan, a section of three quarter inch copper pipe, four peltier plates, a hammer, screwdriver, wire brushes for polishing your copper, a pair of wire strippers, a pair of wire cutters, and drill press. So the first thing you want to do is mark out the length of your heat sink on your plate or pipe. The next thing you need to do is cut your copper pipe or plate down to length. So the next thing you want to do is clean up the edges on your copper pipe or aluminum plate. So after you cleaned out the outside, you'll want to grab some sandpaper and clean out the inside. Next, you want to cut the length of your copper pipe so you can flatten it into a plate. After you've cut your pipe, the next step is to flatten it out. So next we're going to polish up our copper using a wire brush so it will conduct heat better. There we go, one clean piece of copper. Now the next thing you want to do, if your heat sinks are like mine, they came with mounting brackets. So you're going to need to remove this before you can put it on to the generator. Next thing you want to do is drill out these mounting brackets off the heat sinks. You have to make sure that the drill bit is the proper size because you don't want to wreck your heat sink but still want to remove the mounting brackets. After you drilled these out, some of them just fall off, such as this one. Some of them might not, so you will have to use pliers to just remove them. And it usually doesn't take that much. So now if you got used heat sinks like we did, you're going to need to take off the excess thermal paste. You can use a scraper, and then use a wire brush to polish the copper clean. There we go. So now what you're going to want to do is place your heat sink on top of your copper plate. Take a center punch and a hammer and mark out the holes in your heat sink. Now that we've marked where the holes in the heat sink are on the copper plate, I'm now going to drill them out using the same bit we used to drill out the heat sink bracket. After I've drilled out the holes in the copper plate, I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and clean off any burrs that have occurred so that it will sit flat against the peltier plate. Now you'll want to apply a small amount of thermal paste to each peltier plate and apply it to your heat sink. It does not matter which way the plates are facing as long as they're all facing the same direction. Again, just a small amount. You don't want to use too much, it will actually inhibit the heat transfer. Make sure they're all aligned evenly on your heat sink, and you're good to go. Now that you have the pieces of your generator assembled, you take a spool of mechanics wire and cut off pieces a little over an inch and a half long. You need four of them. So now you're going to want to thread your piece of mechanics wire through both holes and bend them over. Now you need to take a pair of pliers and twist them on. Now it's time to start wiring your generator together. The sides, we're going to trim the wires down nice and short. And then we're going to strip them off. Use a pair of pliers to crimp them together. Now do the same for the fan, but make sure to use screw tight merit so you can change the polarity depending on if you're heating or cooling the bottom plate. So now, I'm going to cut and strip 
the two leads that are going to go to our voltage controller. Then we're going to take this, this charging cable. I'm going to go to the very end of it and cut off a few inches away so that we can still use it for other projects. So now I'm going to strip the wire to reveal the two leads. So slightly strip these ones, they're very fragile wire. So these ones I can connect to the heat sink. So in this end here, we'll plug into your goal zero, or it can also plug into any other voltage regulation device. Let's get to testing. Kind of a little bit hard to see, but here I am generating energy off the hot tailpipe for my truck, and using that energy to power an LED light on the goal zero. And I've placed a bowl of snow on top. We now have the generator working in reverse. It's now using the heat sink to take heat from the air and pass it through the peltier plates into the snow. So you've noticed I've reversed the leads going to the goal zero and are barely generating enough power to have a charge. We have a nice warm spring day today, so I decided to put out a black piece of metal for the generator right on top of it. So as you can tell by the faint light from the goal zero, we're barely getting some energy out of it, but it is something, so it does work. I tried the fan earlier, and the fan did turn really slowly, but seemed to be using up all the energy we were generating. Here I have a tea light candle under my generator, charging up the goal zero. So now I'm going to try plugging in my iPhone. There we go. Charging my iPhone with fire. You can also charge GPS units, cameras such as GoPros. You can even charge something as large as an iPad. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe.